Let's have a differentiation in understanding how the weavers weave. There will be those from the indigenous cultural communities where weaving tradition often is imbibed with a spiritual meaning. Then you have the lowland Christian tradition, which has been the um, areas perhaps of Panay, of Ilocos, the areas where uh, are the Catholic, uh, sorry, the Christian, uh, uh, the Spaniards came to colonize us and there was already a, a acculturation and a fusion of two cultures. This is another grouping. This is often what we call traditional textiles versus that of the indigenous cultural communities. And these are the communities that have not been touched by colonization. Two separate things, okay? So let us take a look at the weaving of the looms here in the local tradition of the um, cooperatives, like for example, in lowland uh, places like, for example, in Panay, where in Miagao at the 19th century was the center of weaving. This area would weave because of skill, because of the signs that were often brought in from Spain and then brought into our local culture. And therefore, it does not as much have a spiritual meaning. It has a lot of tradition made by the women. It has a sense of design. So we must look at it from that perspective. When we begin to look at indigenous cultural communities weaving, that is where we begin to put in the uh, perspective of spirituality. A lot of our weavers uh, weave with a sense of connectedness to this bigger space, an openness which is connected to the mountains where they are, it's connected to the seas and everything is interconnected. This in a way is very much uh, very Filipino, the true essence of the Filipino. So when they weave a design, it was because either their goddess, um, their a higher belief system, a form of what they call their god or their um, guides and guardians and muses have given them in a sense design. It's a very creative process because you know how art and creativity often they say comes from the muses. So this is the same thing. You will have them begin to put together designs within the vernacular, the motif vernacular of their uh, specific uh, indigenous community. For example, you will see repetitive designs when it comes to uh, stripes, uh, parallel with a panel where there is some kind of an anthropomorphic form, which is looking abstract. But actually, when you look deeper into that anthropomorphic form, you will find it is either an animal form, it can also be uh, the inside tummy of a uh, crocodile that ate a man, or it can be like a part of a womb of a woman, you know, like is the, in the Bagobo in the textile. Or the Bagobos have also these beautiful textiles that are just like um, flags, and it's all stripes, and they call it the bandera, or the tibolis with their unique, unique Ika tradition, which is uh, in a way very similar in Southeast Asia with this Ika tradition. So there is a sense of uniformity within their vernacular. When I say this, it's because each indigenous community has a sense of coloration that is uniquely theirs, have a sense of motive that is uniquely theirs, and also have a sense of um, patterning of a repet repetition and a forming of patterns within the weave. That is why it is important to understand so that when you see something striped, it is not just Kalinga, but it is also Bagobo, although material may be different in that one is Abaca, other, another using cotton or polyester, but at the, the uniqueness of each in the mixture of color is what we have to take a look at. And this is where experts come in to be able to share what this is. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in our next episode of Archives Unveiled, the Yuchenko Museum Online.